Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the Adidas Speed Tilt 150 boxing gloves. So stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys, Carlo here, and today I'm doing a review on the Adidas Speed Tilt 150 boxing gloves. I got mine in the red colorway. You can also get this in blue, gray, or black. I have mine in 16 ounces, and you can get it anywhere between eight and 16 ounces, and it is a Velcro closure only glove. It is a synthetic glove that utilizes injected molded foam, and it is manufactured in Pakistan. Now, um, I'm sure you guys are aware by now, or at least most of you guys are aware of Adidas' new Speed Tilt line. Um, I recently did a review on their 350 Speed Tilt 350 gloves, which were uh, amazing gloves, awesome gloves, probably the best Adidas gloves I've tried on thus far. <clears throat> so I was uh, interested in trying out the entry level to their Speed Tilt lineup, which is going to be uh, this 150 glove. And the best way for me to describe this is this is a uh, slightly better I'd say a version of like an Everlast uh, Elite Pro Style glove. So those Everlast Elite gloves you can find at your local sporting goods stores like Dick's, um, you know, Big Five for those of you guys that are here on the West Coast, we have Big Five Sporting Goods. Um, I'm not sure about the East Coast guys, I'm sure you guys have something similar to Dick's or Big Five. Uh, or even Target and Walmart sometimes have those Everlast Pro Style Elite gloves. And this to me is a slightly better version of those. Um, it does use what they consider their, their patented speed tilt technology, which, which is basically how it positions your hand in the actual glove itself. Um, since it is an entry level glove, the synthetic they use on here is a little bit on the thinner side. Again, very comparable to what you would find in the Everlast entry level gloves. Um, and I'm not a big fan of injected molded foam, um, but there are definitely some redeeming qualities with this glove. So design wise, when you look at it, it looks very similar to the other speed tilt gloves. With kind of that angular uh, fist placement as well as just the aesthetic design of the glove. It utilizes the synthetic leather outside casing um, that is a little bit on the thinner side and has more of a satin finish to it. You have the Adidas three stripes that goes down the back as well as that one singular uh, piece of molded foam that goes through the entire glove from the bottom cuff all the way to the hand compartment. So that's kind of the signature of the speed tilt is that it uses one piece of foam rather than having a separated hinge point uh, between the wrist compartment as well as the, the hand compartment itself. So uh, you also have this kind of this matte synthetic material on the back of the glove that comes down to the cuff. It does a speed tilt 150 um, coming down here as well. You also have the uh, black piping that goes around the bottom cuff. You also have the speed tilt design on the thumb. Adidas right here on the finger compartment and a nylon attached thumb and mesh palm as well as a fairly large grip bar as well. I know a lot of you are, are not fans of the mesh palm, but this has it. Again, entry level glove. And the least favorite feature of this glove is going to be uh, kind of the half-ass Velcro closure with the elastic. So again, like I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to that Everlast Elite Pro style uh, with kind of the lackadaisical wrist support. Um, at the bottom that I'm just not a fan of both in terms of just durability um, and wrist support um, So that's kind of the big drawback with this 150 and then you also have the polyester nylon liner as well as the weight tag on the inside uh, And where it's manufactured uh, wrist support wise you have Maybe not even an eighth of an inch of padding on the inside of the palm so it's pretty lacking in terms of wrist support on the inner portion of the glove and it's pretty soft and not very rigid on the inside. Uh, the back of the wrist, you have about a half inch of medium density foam padding, which again, is the same kind of foam padding you guys have on the back of the glove all the way to the hand compartment. Quality wise, again, for a synthetic entry level glove, um, the synthetic compared to like things you would see with Rival, some of the other synthetic gloves, even the stuff that Sandable uses, like their grape leather, which I, I guess you can technically call a synthetic, definitely has much more thinner and sporting goods feel to it in that regard. I'm not a big fan of the mesh palm, and I'm not a big fan at all 
of kind of this lackadaisical elastic wrist support that just kind of goes over um, and that ends up over time really starting to, to wear out and again very Everlast like. Um, the other big thing for me was this glove was severely underweight. Uh, I believe both gloves came in around at 14.1 or 14.2 ounces and these are advertised as 16 ounce gloves so you're looking at uh, almost two ounces underweight for the size that they are at. So, um, you know, typically an acceptable range is plus or minus like 0.5 ounces. So, for example, if you have a 16 ounce glove, you know, something that's like 15.5 or 16.5, sure, that's all right. I'm not a big deal. Um, it's training gloves. So it's not like you're going to weigh your gloves in every time you use them to go work out at the gym. But if you're talking about a 16 ounce glove, essentially being a 14 ounce glove, um, then that's, there's definitely an issue there in terms of uh, quality control when it comes to weight. I mean, the stitching, it looks all pretty solid. Um, if the one piece of foam wasn't back here and this glove did have a, a hinge point right here, this glove would definitely be very top heavy. And you can really see that it does have a little bit of sag here. And the only thing that's really keeping it from it completely sagging down is the fact that this one piece of foam goes all the way down to the bottom cuff. Uh, without that, this thing would definitely just be folding right over. Um, so it's definitely a, a top heavy glove, which doesn't make sense for a glove that's two ounces underweight. So the fact that you're two ounces underweight and your glove is still imbalanced, to me is a big QC issue in that regard. Uh, now, comfort wise, sliding your hand in here, <clears throat> putting this wrist support on. The wrist support feels okay. Again, it's not the best in terms of support and feeling rigid right there. Uh, thumb placement's actually pretty good. You know, when you make a fist, you can see that the attached thumb uh, doesn't pull down and make the tip of the thumb jam down onto your thumb. And the piping isn't too tight, so that feels comfortable. And the other thing I do like about this glove is the fact that it has a pretty deep finger compartment with a good amount of width and not too narrow. So I definitely like that. And they do put a piece of neoprene to cover the stitching. So I definitely like the feel of that. You do have a little bit of bunching up with the uh, nylon liner in the finger compartment, but it's not too bad. And then you also have the injected molded foam. And they also put a little bit of a softer foam that butts up against the IMF. Uh, that gives you a little bit more of a creature comfort feel to the hand compartment rather than just having molded foam sitting right against your knuckles and it making it a little bit on the uncomfortable side. So um, you definitely have uh, a pretty good, in terms of comfort wise, a pretty good hand compartment in that regard. Thumb placement's good and depth is good. Uh, protection and performance, this is definitely more of a protective glove in my opinion. Uh, it is molded foam, so in terms of the density of the foam padding, you can see it's definitely on the firm side, a little bit on the stiffer side. Don't get a really a good amount of feedback with these gloves if you're using it for the heavy bag. Um, you know, you definitely get a good amount of shock absorp absorption, excuse me, but I wouldn't expect, um, you know, very good feedback if you're going to compare it to like a puncher style glove or a glove that's a little bit more broken in, in terms of the padding over the knuckle area. Um, that speed tilt technology where it's supposed to angle your, your hand into position, you definitely have a little bit of that in terms of putting your hand in position to where when you land a punch, you land on those two front knuckles like you're supposed to. Uh, but with this glove, as imbalanced as it is, I feel like it's a little bit more of a gimmick on the 150s compared to the 350s where you can definitely feel the positioning of your hand is much more, um, I guess you can say, it's more com concrete in terms of it staying true to landing on your two front knuckles. With this one, it just feels like it's more of an afterthought in my opinion, in terms of the, the speed tilt. I mean, you can see that it does have that shape to it, but it's definitely more of a softer glove in that regard. Cost-wise, these gloves are $49. Um, and in my opinion, I don't think it's worth that price considering the quality and the fact that you're at $50 and you can go up 10, 20 bucks. And to me, I'd rather get like a pair of Venom Impacts or gloves in that $60, $70 range that are uh, to me better performers that do not utilize molded foam and you utilize like a multi-layer higher quality foam in my opinion. I feel like it's the speed tilt technology in these 150 gloves um, are a little bit more of an afterthought and the fact that the gloves are way underweight and a little bit top heavy again to me feels like they basically got like a, a cheap Everlast glove and added a couple of little features to it that really don't really work well. Um, and you just said, okay, let's call them the speed tilt 150s and, and just take out the stitching in the seam between this top portion and this bottom portion, although the glove is still too top heavy. So that's my stance on this. I feel if they were gonna do this, they should have put a little bit more thought into it. I would have happily 
paid ten to twenty dollars more. Say, say for example, these these Speed Tilt one fifties were like seventy dollars, right, or seventy nine dollars. There's still a big gap between these and the three fifties, which I believe are one sixty nine, like a hundred dollars more. So if you were to increase the price, make a better Velcro strap, get rid of the mesh palm, uh, put multi layer foam, and still be synthetic, but charge like seventy nine dollars, eighty bucks. Um, you would de definitely sell these sell these at a, a, a higher rate compared to something that's fifty dollars, and the quality just isn't there in my opinion. So, uh, if you guys have any questions or uh, comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find these Speed Tilt 150 boxing gloves. I'll see you guys later. Peace.